difficulty, we, you know what I mean? But we, we definitely want to service the people and let them know what y'all got going in the community, man. Um, and um, for those that don't know, uh, we, we had a minor technical difficulty, but we, we up here, we talking to um, Miss Brittany from MCL about the rockers and rollers and the possibility of other recruits coming in. And um, you also got another gentleman with you that wanted to talk about his groups as well, right? Yes. Yes, sir. Uh, this is, again, Josue Rodriguez, uh, community organizer for the Center for Independent Living. All right, pleasure having you on the show, man. I want you to know it's an honor. Thanks from um, me and my whole Universal Star family is, uh, to just to have the opportunity to have you on the show. So, uh, well, uh, the pleasure is ours, and we, we thank you for this opportunity. Oh, uh, most definitely, man, most definitely. The pleasure all allows. So uh, tell me about... Um, Tell me a little more about your project you're working on over there at MCL. Well, we have many projects going on, uh, as you as you very well know, uh, and maybe the community might, might not know, but uh, we focus on uh, helping people with disabilities in our community become more independent. And uh, one, so, uh, several of the ways that we do that is we try to engage our consumers, what we call our consumers, um, into different activities going on in the center and into different groups uh, going on in the center. Uh, like Brittany mentioned, we have rockers and rollers. We have the upcoming child's group for our young kids. Uh, we have our peer outreach program, which is a mentoring program, where uh, we actually pair up uh, older, more experienced people with disabilities with uh, younger people with disabilities or people with disabilities who might have just acquired their disability and need somebody to guide them through the process of adapting to, to a, a new way of life. Um, we have our next chapter book club as well, where we learn uh, where we have different book clubs that are located throughout the community. And this is to uh, create awareness and to help people become more literate, people with disabilities uh, become more literate uh, and learn about uh, reading and help each other out. They, they read different types of books of uh, different topics. Um, we also have our advocacy group. And right now, uh, we are very involved in the community. We are partnered with many different organizations. But um, our primary groups here are uh, the Barrier Free Memphis Society, which is a group that meets every first, thurs uh, first uh, Tuesday of the month from 10.30 to 12, uh, primarily here at the center. And one of the things that we go, that, that group is working on is creating awareness about people with disabilities out in the community and the different barriers that we might um, confront. And we, we, we're not only talking about architectural barriers like stairs uh, that impede in, uh, entrance into buildings for people that might use mobility devices, but we also want to address the attitude barriers that many people that in, the, in our general community have a misperception about people with disabilities. And many, uh, many people out there might see people with disabilities as vulnerable or incapable of holding a job or contributing to the community. And Barrier Free Memphis Society is focusing on that, on breaking those stereotypes and those barriers uh, to facilitate the the full integration of people with disabilities into our community. Uh, we, like I said, we meet every first Tuesday of the month from 10.30 to 12 uh, at the Center for Independent Living. And uh, right now we are in a recruitment process, so we welcome anybody in the community with and without a disability that would like to join us. Because again, uh, when we, we want to work on, on bringing out awareness as a community, since we are part of the community, we want our community members and leaders to also uh, be contributing to, to our efforts, as well as we are uh, we contribute to other efforts out there in the community. Man, that's uh, a beautiful we also thing. Have, yes? I was just saying, man, you know, it's a beautiful thing what y'all doing, man, allowing God to use y'all and 
make a positive mark in the community, you know, because you mentioned something that's really key, and that's about throwing away the stereotypes and just going out and making changes, you know. Um, and, and us here at Universal Star, man, we all about uh, coming together as a community, so it's an honor to be able to have any opportunity we can to support you guys and help build and recruitment and, you know, we most definitely want to show y'all as much love as possible, man, and the whole MCO family over there. Um, and it's it's really good that y'all are doing something to, um, you know, bring people together from all walks of life, you know, um, and giving them that opportunity to talk about their feelings. I mean, talk about their feelings and have the willingness to listen. So that's great, man. And, uh, for all the listeners out there that's looking for something positive to get into, whether it's uh, in your spare time or you're looking for a project to volunteer with, make sure you get with the people over there at MCL, man. They're doing some great things. So, Josue, do you and all... Also, uh, also, go ahead. Also, if I may, Gary, 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 go ahead. also, if I may get in there, a part of the recruitment for Rock and Rollers, I am wanting to partner with as many schools if, as I can to uh, go into the schools and do a presentation so they can actually see why we want these individuals to come over here and see what we have to offer. So if I could get the word out, just have as many high schools, preferably, to call me. I'll take elementary two for the pals, but I am really working with young adults. 16 to 25, that must be enforced. It must have a disability. The number here is 901-726-6404. Uh, um, one, of the, one of the important things that uh, uh, Brittany just touched on was we are doing that outreach to, to the high schools, but we also want, we, not only do we want to uh, engage them when, as they come out of high school, but we also want to be able to be a resource in transitioning, transitioning uh, students with disabilities into uh, services and supports for when they come out of high school and are adults uh, with disabilities, not just students, and help them and facilitate that transition from, adult, from youth services to adult services. Can we get that number one more time from you? Sure. Uh, again, the number here is 726-6404. That's 901-26-6404. Okay, thank you. Yeah, most definitely, man. And then boy, um, working with, with the students doing transition is very important because um, they're going through a lot of things and they're dealing with a lot of different problems at that time. So that's the best time to catch them. You know, and this is all goes back to something that um, I've discussed with Brittany, and I know my youth star family is familiar with uh, five Ps, you know, understand what I'm saying? Uh, proper proper preparation, preparation prevents poor performance, and uh, we take that dead serious over here. And that is definitely what you guys are doing, y'all, are preparating them to put them in a place to where they can be able to help themselves as they do deal with the real world because um, there aren't many safeguards or many procedures that or are shown to them how the world works mm -hmm. as far as aid and assisting them as, as much as possible. And so having you guys... And, I, I, and you just touched on something that's important about safeguards. Um, and we, 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 we really don't want those safeguards, but we want to make sure that people with disabilities have the accommodations necessary to be able to thrive, whether it be in school or in the job or in their personal life. We want those accommodations for them to be able to be productive citizens. Yeah, and um, people don't actually understand that uh, being a productive citizen doesn't just happen uh, for people like that. and. Um, not just to say people with a disability for people to think I'm trying to put a title on something. I'm talking about in general. Mm -hmm. For those that feel that you're just going to fall, uh, opportunities and blessings just fall in your lap like that. It don't happen. Um, you need a high school diploma to flip burgers now. So, you know, uh, you know, you guys going out your way to 
try to preparate some of those steps that need to be taken as far as making themselves aware of what they'll be dealing with on a day-to-day -day basis out here is really important. Um, like you said, it's, it's not so much about the safeguards, but it does make it easier when you got somebody commu to communicate um, your issues with. And I know that that's something you guys pride yourself on is creating a form for people to communicate their feelings. Yeah, to be able to commun communicate their feelings and to be able to advocate for, like I said, for their accommodation. Uh, people with disabilities or should be able to feel comfortable stating, okay, I need an accommodation because I can't stand up too long uh, at, at, and I need an accommodation of being able to sit uh, once in a while. Stuff like that, even in school. Uh, a lot of students, and this is something that, that, that is important, I feel is important to me is a lot of students, particularly those in colleges, uh, tend to not want to ask for accommodations so that um, they won't be perceived or, or, or be singled out as having a disability. But I want to I want to just throw out there: it is important for a, a person with a a student with a disability to be able to get the accommodations that they need, whether it be, be note taking services or other types of accommodations. Because you should be a, you should be able and willing to accept the the assistance that that is out there to be able to make you uh, successful in the classes that, the courses that you're taking. So it, there's nothing wrong with asking for an accommodation or, or for asking for assistance. Right. Oh. Brittany, was there something that you wanted to add on to that? It's just um, we. We just want to say to provide a realistic understanding to an individual with a disability because a lot of times um, they get the padded version of what it is to have a disability. And really, it's nothing different except a body part working differently. So we're, we're not going to show pity on you. We're, we're not, we're not going to do that. But we are going to show you that you can but it's your responsibility to make sure that you are productive. Even though I understand their policy and I have their policy, I'm not opposed to having someone else come in and say, I have cerebral policy too, but it affects me this way. How does it affect you? Right. Then we clarify that. We can come together and say, well, let's work on this. Yeah, how did you do this? How did you cope with that? Because there are different ways um, that people with disabilities cope. And a lot of times, it's totally different. Right. We don't know everything about every disability. But what we can do is work together as a community and find solutions. We say here at the Center for Independent Living, nothing about us without us. Right. So if we're not there, then it's not going to be There's no I in So we're all a team, regardless right. of the disability. And we're not going to let anyone back down because of a disability. I know, that's right. I know that, um, you know, me and you, we, we politic a lot and, um, you you said something that stuck with me one day, and you mentioned the difference between uh, the term special need and a need, and that was something that was realistic as far as people understanding that it doesn't make your need no different from anybody else's just because you may need some aid and assistance in that process as far as doing what you're trying to do. And that's, that's really big of you guys because the mark that you're leaving, not only by working with the youth, but the mark that you leave on people for their entire life is a real inspiration. But uh, we're getting ready to take a quick break. Lord, please let us show it. I'm a poet. Yes. yes. Okay, thank y'all. Thank y'all for y'all patience, man. We want to... Um, Definitely get into this topic about what y'all got popping over there at MC with the Rockers and Rollers and the whole nine. Um, I have a 
have a question. What are some of the things that you guys do to recruit? You know, I know that you guys are now in the recruiting process, but exactly, you know, like what is one project that you may be working on in order to recruit more people? Well, one of the things um, that, like Brittany said, one of the things that we're doing is doing starting to do outreach to schools and the school districts. Uh, so that's one of our uh, outreach efforts. Another thing is doing presentations out in the community about the different uh, resources and programs that we have available for people to be able to get services here at the center. Um, we do a lot of collaborating with a lot of community organizations out there that help us spread out the word. And actually, uh, through our collaboration, we've been able to obtain uh, more consumers from that. Uh, so outreach, we have a, a strong outreach effort right now out there to create awareness that we're here and we're here for the community. We're here to help our people out and help our people become independent. That, that's our primary goal. And not only that, but um, sharing your story is the big part of the group. If a person, as I said earlier, can, not, can know that you understand where they're coming from, you may not only, you may not work it on the same path if they have it, but if they can understand where you're coming from, if they can hear your story, actually hear that their, story, that their situation is not as bad as they portray it then that brings them in to um, support the organization. Now, it doesn't happen that way all the time, but that, that's a part with a person hearing our story. Right. Well, y'all make sure y'all let yeah. everybody over there know that uh, Universal Star was a part of their recruitment process, you know what I mean? Because we definitely want to make sure we help y'all out as much as possible. And we're involved with you guys at, at, at in the uh, to the fullest with whatever you guys are doing. Make sure that, uh, you know, we try to get as many people out as possible to go ahead and um, get into your program so that you all would be more successful with, with the um, direction that you're going in. Yeah, y'all make sure y'all tell them to check out this show. This show will be airing on Ustream probably a little bit later on this evening, and it's airing live all over the web. So take down that number, y'all. Make y'all give them that contact information one more time for those that's trying to find yes. out more about what y'all doing. Yes, yes, sir. Our uh, phone number once again is nine zero one seven two six six four zero four. And if anybody would like to contact us via email, you can actually contact our executive director, Deborah Cunningham, at MCIL. I mean, I'm sorry, it's MCIL at MCIL.org. And again, um, where are you located for those people that maybe just want to go ahead and come by and see you guys? Yeah, that, we're located in Midtown. Uh, our address is 1633 Madison Avenue. We're right across from the cash savers, uh, the, which was the old Piggly Wig. Good deal, good deal. Hopefully, do you find have you ever have you met some people or families that maybe have someone with the disability that had never heard of MCL? Definitely. Every day, mm -hmm. every day, we're someone who um, has never heard of us, and that's why I said. Hearing our stories is a big part of this show because people, when you when you see people, people develop a they have to develop an automatic trust to be able to tell you what they do and why they. Do. So if I can provide a if I can provide a service to an individual that will make them better and more independent, and then possibly.
Yeah. It's, it's really cool of y'all, man, to just come with, you know, open hearts and open minds because we need that a lot of time. As people, you know, people don't understand that most people feel what they don't understand. And so for y'all to really do what y'all doing, it, it closes it shuts that idea down. It, it it allows people to open their hearts and their minds and find it within themselves to gain a better understanding not of only of the situation that's going on around them with others, but of themselves and the ways that they can be helped and also help to help others. So that's a positive thing y'all are doing for the sisters and brothers out there, man, because it's definitely needed. Yes. Uh, and let me reiterate, um, I need tools to calm because uh, that's where the difference is going to be made. In school, getting them when they are out. So, get a clear picture on what is for them. Um, I really cool contact us in the pocket. One of the one of the uh, things that we have going coming up uh, in uh, in about two weeks uh, is we're trying to organize a roundtable composed of organizations that work with people with disabilities, and this is an effort uh, being put forth by the uh, Memphis Advisory Council for Citizens with Disabilities, along with the Center for Independent Living. So we want to extend the invitation to those organizations that work with people with disabilities to join us on uh, Friday, February the 28th at the Benjamin Owl Hook uh, Public Library at uh, 3030 Poplar Avenue from uh, 1030 to, to 1 o'clock. Uh, we want to extend the invitation to those organizations working with people with disabilities so that we can come together and uh, join efforts in confronting a lot of the issues and, and misconnections that our uh, constituents, our, our citizens with disabilities here in Memphis uh, aren't aware of. We want to join efforts to uh, in adv advocacy efforts. Uh, we want to bring awareness and collaboration among different organizations that work with individuals with disabilities in the community. And if they have more questions about that, they can call me here at the center, um, or they can actually, or if they want more information on the event, they can actually called the Memphis Advisory Council for Citizens with Disabilities at 901-7, I'm sorry, it's 901-881-7675, or they can email me at Josue, that's J-O-S-U-E, at M-C-I-L.org. We're looking forward to um, bridging the gap of miscon misconnections uh, with, within our uh, community, and putting a uh, upfront effort to advocating for the rights of citizens with disabilities here in Memphis. Yeah, well, Brittany, you know what time it is with me and my Universal Star family, man. We all about helping. We need an invite to that, though. Yeah, most yeah. definitely. Uh, well, Jose. Josue, sure right? Isn't it Jose? We can do five to come out to um, come and possibly uh, your radio there. We do it from there. She want to know. Uh, well, we probably can. Um, we probably can call in from there, depending on how we set things up. So you are gonna try to get us a seat at there, right? So, so tell us about the event again. The event coming up. Yeah. yeah. On the twenty eighth. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, gonna be a, a. We're we're getting together organizations that work with people with disabilities. Um, and we want to start a continuous collaboration and networking with these organizations to bring a strong voice of unity uh, from our, our organization and being able to advocate together for different uh, resources or funding streams or different issues that uh, our constituents uh, from these different organizations might be confronting on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, we want to, th again, this event will take place on February the 28th from 10.30 to 1 at the Benjamin Alhook Public Library. That's 3030 Poplar Avenue. Okay. Well, we're looking forward to being involved, man. You know, all you got to do is call me. We here, 
you know what I mean, whenever you need me. Uh, and I also yes. advise my whole Universal Star family to check that out. Oh, yeah, we'll be there. <laughs> we'll yes. be there Great. most definitely. If we have to, we'll try to do what we can to set it up so you guys can be on there, hopefully live. Uh, what day is that on? What day is that again? What what day of the um, week is it? The twenty eighth. Oh. It's a Friday. Oh, okay. 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 Good deal. It'll be like a day early, so mm-hmm. we'll have to see what we can do to set something up. Hopefully. Oh, we, once again, we wanna we wanna get uh, invite the organizations if they have any questions. Uh, give us a call. Give me a call, and we're more than happy to provide more information for them. Most definitely. Okay, man, that's cool. And I want to thank you guys again for calling in and giving us more insight about your programs, man. And um, let us know. Um, hit me up and let us know any way that we can help you guys out, um, you know, and uh, definitely keep us to update with everything that you guys are working on. It was an honor having y'all as guests. Brittany okay, and Horseway. Can you say can you say that again? I was saying, um, thank you, and um, we're glad you let us be on. Uh, it was our pleasure. Y'all have a blessed day. Star, or you can reach to us again. We so we appreciate your uh, support, and again, thank you for listening to the to the radio station where. We take your uh, opinions into consideration. Excuse me. Uh, our contact information is you can reach us on Facebook at Universal Star, or you can reach Rico at Rico James, Warren at Warren Mack, and myself, Janice Lewis, all on Facebook. You can also reach us on our website at Universal Star Webs. Dot, dot net dot com and then you can call call in to us you can you know access us at one four two four two zero three eight zero eight four zero five access number six three eight six eight four and now at our our twitter account which you guys still have to help me with so forgive me if I don't say it just right but it is universal star at Universal Star 11 gmail.com. Help me with it. Thank you so much, guys. And y'all make sure y'all check us out on Ustream too. Universal UStarRadio.net at Ustream. So y'all make sure y'all get your clicks up. All check us out on there. Uh, this is us again, the Ustar Radio. You know that Ustar we are. And for the last few minutes, you have listened to the U-Star Radio Network Broadcasting. They will be here every Saturday from 3 p.m. to 4.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. Every Saturday, that's right. So call them at 1-424-203-8405, access number 638-684. We're broadcasting worldwide out of the beautiful city of Memphis, Tennessee. This is Herb Singer, your uh, narrator, CEO, and president of Memphis Talk Radio Network on the Herb Singer Show. Broadcasting until next time. God bless you.